Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. And today I want to do a review, quick review of this uh, Modbus temperature sensor. And um, I received it, uh, this one from my father-in-law because he said that there are so many occasions or you know, instances when they are doing industrial automation that they need to measure one more temperature. And let's say if the PLC doesn't have any analog inputs anymore, if you want to extend it by another card, which can, you know, which has like, I don't know, eight analog inputs, that would be like, you know, 200 euros or something like that. So he was looking for something which is cheaper, like a cheaper alternative to measure a temperature. And uh, he found this unit on, well, actually, I'm not really sure where he bought it. But when I um, search for this, which uh, is called TPA9B01, uh, and this is a PT100 temperature sensor, then he found this like for $30 or, or something like that. So it is um, a really good alternative when you want to measure a single temperature, or let's say the temperature is far away, so you would have to run a long wire. So even though this is using a TP100 where the, uh, the length of the wire actually matters, but because this is so close to the unit, actually it doesn't matter anymore because you can have the, well, the sensor module next to the, the actual device that you are measuring. So you can have just a, a very short cable. So what you buy is the, you buy this uh, sensor board. It also comes with an enclosure, it's a plastic enclosure. And it also comes with this PT100 temperature element, which is terminated in this metal sleeve. So if you are measuring temperature of uh, like a copper or a steel pipe, you can just you know clamp it to the cable or the pipe, and then it's going to measure the, the water temperature or the fluid temperature inside it. And everything works in mode bus, so it is really too easy to handle. Um, uh, as you can see, you connect the, the three wires here. So if you have a free wire temperature probe, you, you wire the, uh, the wires like this one. And also there is a jumper here, so if you are using a free wire uh, version, then you remove the jumper. And on the other hand, this is 9 to 25 volts. So I'm using 24 volts at the moment. And the other is A plus and B minus is the RS485 for the mode bus. And here I have a USB to mode bus uh, converter. And then let's quickly have a look at how this all functions. So what you can see here is I have uh, the mode bus pole configured. And I have the connection set up to use, um, you know, the serial connection. And uh, by the way, the note here, which says 9608 and one is the default connection option. And of course, uh, the default um, address is uh, slave address one. And everything is stored in holding registers. So what I did here is I, I'm reading holding registers from address zero and I'm reading seven registers. And you can see that the first value is the temperature. So that there is, and that's measuring in Celsius. So that's uh, 26.2 degrees. And of course, if I touch it, then we can see the temperature go up. The second one is the actual resistance, which is measured by the unit. So that's the resistance, uh, resistance of the PT100 element. And then you have uh, on the address two, the slave ID on address three, the communication settings, and you have uh, address four and five for temperature and uh, resistance compensation. And in address six, you can set up different modes. And I'm going to open the documentation for that. So it is, um, you know, really easy to use. And if I open the documentation, let me just bring this around. So it is, oops. So it is all mentioned here. And um, uh, so you only use um, Modbus function three and six. So re either read holding register or write. So you can see the temperature value and the resistance value, and then the mode bus address. You have the bold rate, so you can uh, pre-select from these values here, and then the, the temperature offset, and you have this automatic upload, which will just send the readings over uh, RS485 all the time. But I think it's just easier to leave it in, you know, in value zero or zero mode, where you can just use mode bus to read it um, every so often that you that you need. So for example, here I'm reading every 1000 millisecond. So um, let's uh, change the address. So slave one, address two, oops, sorry, five. Uh, 
of no, six. So <laughs> at the moment we are on slave one. Uh, so this is address 2 and I want to change the station ID or the slave ID to 20. So now response is OK. So this is obviously no longer working because we just changed the address ID. Uh, sorry, the slave ID. But if I change that and then reset, now we can see that now we are reading the device on the new address. So it's that easy to change it. And um, I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. I don't think that, I mean, of course you can, you know, change the speed. You can go up to 19,200, uh, 19, uh, you know, 9,600 is, uh, is like a standard speed. So if you only need to change the mode bus address, you can just use uh, that as a single setting. There is one quirk with the uh, temperature and the PT, the resistance correction, is instead of sending a, um, like like a plus one or a minus one where the how much to correct what you send is uh, the data that you want the device to read so for example you say here uh, set the temperature correction so uh, set it shows you an example so if the uh, the device uh, measures 225.5 so if you know that the correct temperature is 25.5 degrees but then the temperature, uh, which is red, is 26.5. So instead of sending 0 0.9 as a correction, you actually send the value that you want to be measured. So 24.5 times by 10, because all the values, well, the temperature values are with one decimal place. So that's 255. So you send 255 to the temperature correction. And then it's going to, well, I guess internally correct the, calculate the correction. And exactly the same with the PT. A 100 resistance correction value so you send the value that you want to be measured at a particular time uh, so you send that to address 5 and then it's going to use that with that correction so yeah I think it's a it's a very simple device you don't really need a lot uh, I'm going to include a couple of links uh, in the video description but really, when I search for it, I could see so many sellers, even in Hungary, who are selling this. So I think, you know, whatever country you live in, you probably can find local sellers as well. So you might not necessarily have to order it from AliExpress. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.